I do that. There are so many zombies down here. Oh my goodness. Disney is making classic films disappear. Have you ever listened to this Overlord DVD, dude? No. Yeah. No? That's a shame you can't hear him. So it's a, he's got Doomcock. Doomcock. He calls himself Doomcock. And he wears this wow. uh, Doomcock uh, robot type mask, and he's got this sound effects and stuff. It's like, it's cool. I like it. I mean, it's totally LARPy and cringy, but in a wonderfully beautiful way. I love this man. I love this human hmm. being. Uh, I don't agree with everything he says, but uh, I agree with uh, maybe at least 20%, and that's enough for me to love him. I agree hmm. with like 10% of, of what you say, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't have to agree with someone to listen to them, right? No, actually, I agree, I agree with more than twenty percent of this guy. But, uh, but you know, he's he. I'll just say that politically, he's he's in cartoon land for the most part. But I think he's everybody the, is. But uh, everybody but, has their cartoon. Uh, almost, uh, almost everyone is in cartoon and crayon land, and that our political world is is that. But uh, okay, I'm going to play this. You won't hear this, but be quiet while you hear while you hear the silence. All right, I'll be quiet and makes more and more films vanish. Skeptics watching this will say, What are you talking about, Umcock? What movies are vanishing? You're being hyperbolic. I wish so, that were the case. So Doomcock is talking about, uh, now that Disney has bought up these Fox movies, Fox and Disney have merged. There's been these small theaters that, well, these theaters in general that w w they would carry, you know, old run movies, and all of a sudden they're finding more and more of these Fox movies that they could pre have previously get, they can no longer get, and so Doomcock is sounding an alarm. He's saying, "Listen, man, save all your physical copies of stuff because Disney's uh, Disney's heading the way of uh, greater and greater high P whoredom." Did you hear any hmm. of that? Did you hear when I just said that? No, I didn't because the airplane just went overhead. Oh, okay. So anyway, it, uh, I'm going to play a little <laughs> bit more here. But I've been telling people for a long time to hold on to their physical media. Hold fast to not only old movies, but movies from the 80s and 90s that you love. Because these corporations will stop at nothing to maximize their profits, even banishing old movies from public awareness. And my warning seems pressing. Wow, this guy really hates capitalism, everybody. What a boner. What a downer. He's like criticizing the free market for taking uh, digital copies of uh, movies that were made years ago and putting them behind paywalls, making it more unnecessarily expensive for us to be able to purchase the little candy distractions that we get between... 12 hour fucking shifts hmm. what a fucking dick right yeah i don't know how about dare that. he how dare he is he criticizing capitalism or is he criticizing the free market no he's not knowing anything he's criticizing disney for uh about no. ready to uh use this ip power to uh lock all these films behind paywalls i was being facetious uh but in point of fact, he is actually attacking capitalism, whether he knows it or not. Right. But he's actually, of, I think he's of a conservative lean, so I think he would be offended. Oh, listen, Doomcock, if you ever see this video, I love you, man. Yeah, I gotta check him nothing out. Personal, nothing personal, nothing personal, but I'm just pre saying. Pretty easy name to remember. Overlord DVD is the name of the channel. Doomcock here. He's broken some stories on Star Wars leaks, and he's been attacked by by the uh, corporate media on numerous occasions so really yep oh do you know what the corporate media has been doing to youtubers i'm sure you found some of that stuff right? no well you you don't know how many hit pieces they keep writing on youtubers over and over again nope you're out of the loop you don't know what's going on that, that no, might be I better have, you I know what follow. i know because you've been you know you know like you've been like you're out of it, dude, because you're, but you're out of it for a great reason. You're actually yeah. doing, I mean, I think you're doing well, right? With your flooring, right? Yeah. I mean, and you're, yeah, well, by the way, I'm, your work, I remember when you started and, 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 you know, you started how long ago? Was it two years ago? Three, two or three? Yeah, two years ago. Uh, and, and you basically self taught and you, you, at least the pictures you share look, you know, you do marvelous work. 
you know, yep. when I, I try to. Quality. I actually, I mean, remember. I take I take pride in what I do. I try to make it better. I mean, a lot of the places we work, it's it's older apartments and older buildings and stuff, and they're usually not high income neighborhoods. So there's not a lot of care that gets put into them, uh, except for uh, for this management company, and they're actually pretty good about it. Um, so I enjoy working for them. I enjoy making shitty places nicer. Yeah, I feel like I'm, it's it's not just. Yeah. I'd love to do that. Actually, I told you. I, I mean, I look at the work. I see your pictures, and I got physical issues. I couldn't do it. But if I had, if I had the physical ability, uh, I would. I'd actually really enjoy doing that. It's it's a it's a. I mean, it's it's it can be therapeutic. It's a nice process, and it's my kind yep. of work. Actually, like there's there's a there are degrees of variability. There's design. And yet, there's also a certain amount of repetition that I enjoy as well. Yes, there so, is plenty of repetition. Yeah, yeah, so I like that blend. And I actually like the type of things that I do, even my websites that I do for the show. Normally yep. I do, but I didn't do today because, well, you know, I just didn't. But uh, that that that's a lot of tedious repetition going through all of these, all of these especially when I have to go through the filtering process where I have to make sure I got nothing I don't want shown right. anywhere and everything is tagged and images or my images and not some, you know, stuff like that. Well, that's what I got to work on business wise is get it, making those more accessible to basically my audience, the customers, make you know it, what I mean? Making what more accessible? My work. Instagram so and Pinterest. Can... Yep, I know. That's all things we I have to. It's just. Oh, you're already working on uh, that. Pinterest would well, be big. You got to be Pinterest, right? You got that. No. Well, you got to be doing Pinterest. That seems like tailor made. I bet you the the ladies would love that. Probably. I mean, especially some of your be more beautiful floors. Some of your floors are you get you know, when you put in the more exotic stuff. Yep. Sometimes. Yeah. But that's that's more the exception than it is the rule. Well, I know, but still. But but still, I mean, we have we have enough work. We're pretty much gonna be busy. Oh, so all you should be doing Instagram and like do like like little one minute, two minute little video clips of yep, I'm doing this babe is and then some little amusing story about a duck that almost ate your tire, but luckily you had a hatchet, so you cut that bitch down. Yeah, you know, things like that. <laughs> <laughs> that might be great marketing. That might be. You always start off nice and always end with something like that, you know. Some kind of murder. Some always a murder of something <laughs> cute and cuddly too. <laughs> always something cute and cuddly. Yeah. Man, who wouldn't want you working in their home? Right. <laughs> yes. And then the hamster, and then and then I ground the hamster oh. into the meat grinder and. Uh, it squealed have for you, a while, but uh, have you seen that commercial? It's a it's a it's a flooring commercial. Uh, actually, I don't know what kind of commercial it's for, but uh, it's a carpet guy, and he basically he loses his pack of cigarettes, um, and then he sees a lump under the carpet that he just laid down. A lump, a lump in the carpet that he just laid down, hold and the on, customer hold walks on, in. Hold on, hold on, pause this for a moment. Yep. Because this was a beautiful line and it needs a song. Ready? Okay. A lump in the carpet. Wait, what was it? What was the line again? I don't know. There's a lump a in lump the carpet. A lump in the carpet till he laid it down. A lump in the carpet till he laid it down. Yeah, hey, so there the you customer... go. That's your first flooring song and I wrote it for you, buddy. It'd be beautiful. So, anyway. There's a test later, so do make note of the melody. Anyway, go uh, ahead. I hate I hate tests. I know, but oh, um, my, thank you, my love. What what is this that I have you have brought me? Banana split, Banana split blizzard. Everybody, my wife took my daughter out Starbucks. She had she was a little bit bummed, so took her to Starbucks, cheer her up, and then on the way she went and she got me a banana split blizzard from hmm. from Dairy Queen. Now I tell you, is that not love, man? I didn't even ask I had, for it. I had Dairy Queen for di or for lunch anyway. Yeah, but did your wife get you a um, uh, uh, banana split uh, blizzard? No. Without I did not solicitation? Get a I did not. 
We still don't have a vehicle. We all we have is a truck right now. Oh yeah, because of that. Yeah. That settlement that left you high and dry. Uh, what, what kind of credit part. lines do you have? None. Oh, that's the that's the that's the that's the that's one of the killers in America. My credit is not awful. having a credit line is. Uh, we have credit lines. We don't have you know, super great credit or anything, but we have credit lines, and I mean they have, they're godsends. Uh, yeah, especially if you use them like in emergencies, and like in this case, you could use a credit line. Yeah, no, <laughs> not right now. Well, but well, it, it would be nice if at first there was uh, some debts that were eliminated. Yeah, I don't think that's ever gonna happen either. <laughs> I've given up. He ran a a hell of a a tab uh, on those uh, nine seven six numbers back in the nineties. He was a little boy yep. at the time, but they still held him liable for it. So, yep, still got that's that bills. Okay. Them bills. Them bills need paid. You paid. You you know you 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 called them nine. You remember nine six seven six? Do you remember those at all? No. Wow. I wasn't. I was like wasn't around 90s. for that shit. It was the nineties. When were you born? Eighty nine. See that that was you were three years old. Three years old, I think. Maybe that would be like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Three four years old, you would have been, and you were just calling. You were just calling like houses. You were real big on the Dion Warwick one. That was <sighs> incredible. <laughs> we have, but we anyway, have some of the audio recordings. Anyway, go ahead. Um. Anyway, I'll I'll finish this story, then I'm gonna go eat dinner. All right. Um, uh, he, he, he thought he lost his pack of cigarettes and he sees a lump in the carpet. The customer walks in. So what does he do? He stomps on it. Nice. And a bad decision. The, the, the owner comes in and asks what, if, if, if he's seen the hamster <laughs> and then just big blood spot starts pulling out under his feet. Um, this was a real commercial. This was a real commercial. You can look it up. Be- that's beautiful. Uh, I don't know what to search for. I mean, carpet, so, so they, hamster so they, squish. So they took your idea. When was the commercial made? Uh, probably looked like it was maybe the 90s in wow, England. Wow, that must have been really there important. Kind because of that, that means that when they heard you say it on this show today, that they, they went, went back, back in time. time. <laughs> and this is, this is what do you call that thing, that uh, butterfly effect or whatever, that, uh, man, man, you know, a Manchurian Mandela, candidate Mandela thing. Mandela effect. <laughs> yeah, Manchurian, the Manchurian, the Manchurian candidate, candidate thingy. <laughs> I was kidding. Berenstain. Yeah. Berenstain. It's always been the Berenstain Bears. I always remember it that way. Uh, I don't fucking remember. You, do you? You? I, I remember distinctly Berenstain Bears. I always thought, because I always thought I liked I it, actually. I liked the. The, the 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 almost the uh, um well, oh man I can't think of the word now oh when something's out of sync oh whatever it is whatever whatever it is it, 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 anyway. it was an unrhythmic and non I don't usually like non rhythmic words but in this case I liked the hesitancy mm. yeah of the Berenstain because Bernstein blows Berenstain hesitates you well, that might be why people misremember it is because they said what exactly. well, was yeah course that's exactly why they remember it wrong they, their brain made it easier for them because it berenstain doesn't fit into the structures yep yeah but all right i, all right. I can't even find where it's at all right later <laughs> all right so i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna play more of the the doomcocks here and uh see it now more stuff that an article this. has appeared on vulture.com entitled disney is quietly placing classic fox movies into its vault and that's worrying Apparently, now that Disney has acquired Fox Studios, Disney is stealthily launching its campaign to kill the past by forbidding the public exhibition of classic Fox movies like The Omen, The Fly, Planet of the Apes, Zardoz, The Original Day the Earth Stood Still, Suspiria, and Phantom of the Paradise, in fact, the entire Fox catalog. This, my friends, is like... It's so interesting how we are seeing the the ramifications of IP of internet or excuse me uh, intellectual property laws. The ramifications on how 
in the end, internet property, or I keep saying internet, uh, intellectual property laws, IP laws, they, they inevitably, well, what ends up happening is the IP ends up being concentrated into the hands of the few. And every potential new IP out there immediately is gobbled up. They buy everything they can as it emerges, just in case. They'll pay you millions of dollars. The reason they're paying you millions of dollars because they'll pay hundreds of millions of dollars because they know between all of these things that they're paying for, if just one of them turns out to be, and one of them will, that hundreds of millions will be hundreds of billions of dollars over significant uh, decades. That's what IP is. IP enables the, uh, the Citadelians to more easily concentrate human thought to to actually they've actually turned human thought into a commodity <laughs> and they have uh, figured out a way to actually make human thought a scarce resource they've turned human thought into a scarce resource that's what they've done so Doomcock is, uh, he's rightly worried about our, our ability to, to get through to being able to have the ability that we have to see so many things, especially of the past, that we love whenever we want for relatively cheap and uh, they want to significantly raise the price. None of these folks, including Doomcock, as far as I've heard, has dared to go beyond their concerns for this type of IP hoarding. And they're basically making a moral appeal more than anything to these companies. Dude, this isn't this isn't how you do this. Rather than questioning the very nature of uh, IP in the first place. This is, I talked about this maybe yesterday, the uh, 1381 Peasants Revolt and John Ball had his call to the peasants, the, the, the call to challenge the very nature of, of, of nobility, uh, a, a kingly divi di uh, divine nobility. And he says, when Adam delved in, e e where, where Adam delved in Eve span, who was first the gentleman? In other words, this isn't what God called us to. He didn't call us to create nobles like this. This isn't a godly path. It was challenging their very nature. But all they took away from it was, you know, the king should, like, hear us out more. And then when the king hit him with that ideational spook of, am I not God's divinely appointed and anointed, then uh, they forgot John Ball. And uh, all he had to do was say, listen, you guys, I'm King Kings. I am God's anointed. I promise you, I'm going to listen to you. We're going to make some deals. We're going to, here, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm going to even sign this thing that you guys want me to sign that says I'll do this stuff. Oh, goody. And this is kind of what Doomcock is doing. He's one of these. I mean, I, mean, I, I love you, man. I don't, I'm not, this is not an assault on Doomcock. I love what this guy does, and I love that he's out there. Uh, but in my opinion, and this is just my opinion also, I want to add that these are just my opinions, not absolute statements, not trying to fundamentally assault anyone's, uh, existential, uh, uh, possession. I'll say, <laughs> uh, Doomcock is, is one of the, the peasants on, on the horse, the King Richard, this little 14 year old boy rides up to him. And, uh, he's not hearing John Ball's voice. He's, he's asking for the King to sign this little document. I think I could be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But, uh, when I did listen to the 
video unless I missed something. I could have missed something, but I play a little bit more here. Hold on, let me get a little bit forward here. After its $7.3 billion purchase of the studio's parent company, 21st Century Fox was made official this past spring. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna get to I'm gonna get to the very end here. I want to see if he does a little summary here. That their shoddy remakes pale in comparison to the original classics. But when the originals are gone and forgotten, the remakes are the originals. Forever and ever. Amen, Mickey. Amen. Is this the kind of world you want to live in? A Disney-fied world where the past is destroyed and the present becomes the classics by default? To me, there's a word to describe that kind of world. Hell. From the center of the earth, this is Dictor Van Doomcock bidding you all, my friends, stay angry. I don't know about staying angry, my brother. I choose not to go down that path because it literally causes me physical pain. So I can't go with you down that path. But it does sound like what he's saying is, uh, or at least there, what he's concerned about is the idea of Disney having the power to essentially erase history and replace it with this new woke or Terry, and he didn't say it, but that's, if you listen to his other stuff, would be like, he, I don't know if to, he call it woke or Terry, and that's my phraseology. I used to use that phrase. I, I guess I still do to some degree. Uh, but anyway, the, the woke or version of the universe to turn uh, everyone into a, uh, a diverse gender and sexual preference, and all of the shows are about all of the uh, core, uh, basically, social authoritarianism is, is essentially, I mean, He'll call it SJWism. I call it, but it really isn't. It isn't. I mean, it's it's it comes from SJW, but it's social authoritarianism, and uh, that's his take. Now, my take is this should show you, you know, how basically uh, IP is undemocratic. IP allows for small numbers of individuals because that's what it comes down to it comes down to the ceos that make these critical decisions small numbers of individuals having the power to define the potential for human exploration and expression of 300 plus million people like that is extreme authoritarianism, no matter how you slice it, no matter how you want to justify it. Why is it okay if if a handful of people control the thoughts of 300 plus million people just because they don't have the obvious trappings of the state, even though they have the total backing of the state and they are the primary supporters of the political actors of the state and they all come from the same families the political families the media families the industrial complex whatever families they're all swimming in the same fucking pools like that's a conversation that i want to have doomcock something beyond worrying about them trying to change our universe but rather you know maybe we should think about the dangers of continuing to support ip 